Body, so welcome back to uh, George from Ireland. Um, anyway, Angela Rayner, MP, is the deputy leader of the Labour Party. And about a week ago, an anonymous um, Conservative MP said that uh, Miss Rayner is crossing and uncrossing her legs, a la Sharon Stone in Basic Instinct, in uh, with an attempt to put off Boris Johnson during Prime Minister's Question Time. She's sitting there on the Labour front bench and has attempted to, to distract him. So that's been quoted in the newspapers, and she says this is vile, this is misogyny, and so on. Um, and Miss Rayner has also sort of used her class as part of her defence. Hello there, Passam. I hope I pronounced your name correctly. So she is from a working class family in the Manchester area. She had a child when she was 16. She left school without any qualifications. And, and then she worked in a nursing home. But this is the kind of thing that Labour finds impressive. Well, it's not bad to have a child at the age of 16. There's some teenage parents who are outstanding. And even if you become a parent, you're middle-aged, that doesn't automatically mean you're a better parent. But I think it's more difficult when someone's very young. Um, and obviously she didn't have a lot of money, so she's got three children. She's a grandmother already at the age of, uh, of 40. So um, through through her um, work, she joined a trades union that led her into the Labour Party. She became a, a Labour MP a few years ago. But I think working class Labour voters find her reassuring. She's a bit of a John Prescott figure. Because even though Sir Keir Starmer comes from a working class background, he's too intellectual, he's an Oxonian, an outstanding barrister. Um, so um, is this misogyny? Is expressing sexual attraction to women misogyny? I mean, I think it's the absolute opposite. Misogyny is detesting women. Um, and there have been um, lots of allegations of uh, um, sexual harassment. About 50 MPs now say, to say face sexual harassment allegations in Parliament. Uh, which is astonishing. There are 650 MPs in Parliament, obviously about a third of whom are women. So um, uh, how many does, does that leave us? Uh, so that means there are only about 350 men in Parliament, is that right? Uh, maybe 400 men in Parliament. So I'm um, presuming all the sexual, uh, sexual harassment allegations are against males, 50 of whom are facing um, sexual harassment allegations. That's about one in eight. Now, of course, every single one of these could be false. Every single one of them could be true. It's probably somewhere in between. Somewhat depends on what your definition of, of sexual harassment is. Why is this coming out now? Now, feminists will say, because there are enough women who are confident enough to re reach critical mass while we're doing this. Now, the erstwhile leader of the House, Dame Andrea Leadsom, a conservative, she's saying that uh, decisive action needs to be taken. Lindsay Hoyle says that drastic action must be taken and that people must fully review the working practices of the Palace of Westminster. I wonder if this is an opposite of Sir Lindsay because of the speaker, he's supposed to be above the phrase, he's supposed to be a neutral figure. Some people will disagree with that and therefore he should stay out of it. On the other hand, he says, no, he's an advocate for all um, parliamentarians to make life better for them. Um, so, uh, and... Uh, to, to add something to the mix, Neil Parrish, a Conservative MP, he resigned just yesterday uh, because he says that he had watched pornography in Parliament. Now, this doesn't actually harm anyone, but I realise it's unsuitable to do so. And it's, it's supposedly people saw it on his screen. Um, anyway, uh, I wonder whether we're, we're overreacting to a victimless crime. Well, it's not even a crime, um, but I realise you shouldn't be doing that in the workplace and in working time. <clears throat> so there have been so many uh, uh, allegations. Why so many allegations? Are people oversensitive? And what is sexual harassment? I mean, uh, following someone for a very, very long time and making her feel frightened, that would be. Touching someone against her will or against his will would be. Asking someone a date, is that sexual harassment or not? Saying that you think someone's good looking, is that sexual harassment or not? Um, because how does, how does a straight male um, express attraction to a female? And they say unwanted uh, words, unwanted actions. But you don't know they're wanted or not until you've done them, do you? People try and read the signals. Are they getting positive vibes back from the person who's the object of one's uh, affection or attraction? And um, people often people often mislead themselves. People have got an almost limitless capacity for self-delusion. And bear in mind that uh, these controversies, they often happen um, in semi-darkness, in nightclubs, in pubs, outside, at parties with alcohol poured on top of the situation, which includes judgment. It depends how it makes the recipient of the action feel. OK, sure, but the thing is, you don't know how it's going to make the recipient of the action feel until you've done it. And people can try and read these signals and often misread them. And people say, no, she just likes you as a friend, and he's mistaking it for being attracted to him. And maybe she's unsure too. 
people can change their minds. Um, so um, it was Agnès Poirier um, gave this example when she was 19 as an intern in, in, in um, Paris. There was a middle-aged journalist whom she knew to be married and he was aware that she was uh, aware that he was married and he would compliment her on her looks and ask her out to lunch and she would decline. But the next day he'd flatter her again and ask her out to lunch again and it kept happening. I suppose somewhat sometime it's like that. Um, uh, eventually becomes sexual harassment. Yes, Fly and Laurie make, make a valid point there. Um, and that's the way it's becoming and this is sexual McCarthyism. Do, do we want to superintend every tiny interaction? We can't adjudicate these things. This is micromanagement. I don't think we should police everything. And there are things which are trifling, which should just, just be brushed off. And the things which obviously are more serious. Um, now, Marianne Trevelyan, a uh, Conservative MP, said she was pinned up against a wall. Now, that shouldn't happen to anybody. But um, uh, presumably, well, this has always been happening. Um, so I'm a little bit worried about feminist totalitarianism, that if somebody does one thing which is unwise or which is even distasteful, his career is over. Um, is that there, there can be no forgiveness, there can be no rehabilitation, and the whole zero tolerance thing, well, that, that means zero proportionality, zero logic, zero justice, um, and accusation equals conviction. And there's talk of a new legislation outlawing misogyny. So certainly expressions of opinion are going to be criminalised. This is very, very worrying. Now we've had incitement to racial hatred, incitement to religious hatred uh, prohibited. Uh, uh, incitement to racial hatred has been outlawed for decades. I don't think many people would disagree with that one. But um, uh, this is quite worrying. There's this ever-narrowing parameter of permissible, permissible expressions. Um, so uh, we are facing liberal totalitarianism, which doesn't mean killing people, which doesn't mean imprisoning people, but it does mean dismissing people, silencing people. What it might ultimately mean imprisoning people is somebody says something about women or a group of women, and that would be regarded as a criminal offence. Um, so freedom is choice. Um, that's what people in prison find. Their choices are taken away from them. They can't choose what they eat, what they wear, when they get up, when they go to bed, when the lights are off, when the lights are on, if you're allowed out of this room or not, or out of this building or not. And things like that. And, and that's taken away from them. Really, really notice them. And that's a punishment. We're taking away more and more choices for people. You don't like these utterances, you should either ignore it or you should strike back and say what you think. Um, so, I mean, any, anyone who's ever made a sexual advance has made an unwanted one. So inevitably the, the mistakes are going to be made. I just wonder whether we're overreacting to, to this. I'm not saying that there is nothing bad has ever happened there. No. Or people accused of bullying staff, things which are not remotely sexual as well. Um, so uh, if anyone says anything another person dislikes, that's bullying now. Um, I just wonder if we're, we're producing a, um, a nation of snowflakes, a generation which is, which is hypersensitive, which cannot cope with, uh, with adversity. So um, I don't want anyone to be sexually harassed. I don't want anyone to be false accused. I just don't think uh, that we can or should try to superintend every single interaction between men and women. And occasionally the harassment is supposedly um, of men by men, very, very rarely of women by women. So it's, it's a little bit worrying. You think of all the happiness that people miss out on, the romantic relationships that would occur that don't, because people are worried that they'd be accused of, of um, uh, sexual harassment. Um, anyway, that is the world we live in, and uh, probably this, this anti-misogyny legislation will come in, and is so-called misogyny, especially there may well be a Labour government in a few years. Right, thank you for watching.